Hey film friends, I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Welcome to the channel. Remember when you were a kid and you'd get drugged to the science fair and somebody inevitably would have one of those mobiles of the solar system? These round painted styrofoam balls and coat hangers and string? And real ambitious nerds, I mean go-getters, would even have moons encircling the planets? Well this is like that. Only this Janet isn't in space at all. Nah, she's a granola acupuncturist who has to balance a talent for attracting sketchy men with a clingy but precocious girl on the edge of adolescence. This is Annie Baker's assured debut, Janet Planet. If you go down to Hamma. Listen, I have heard After Sun brought up a time or two in reference to this film. In fact, if you're new to the channel, be sure to check out our review of that film in the link above. And I get it. The similarities in some ways are legion. A24 release, small independent picture from a debut female director, even thematically, movies about memory with a unique kid's eye perspective, films located in a specific space and time and showing us the unremarkable, exquisitely difficult lives of adults, grown-ups a little too wrapped up in their own problems. But there are differences we simply must get to. This is a movie about a girl, an 11-year-old ginger who is coming of age and trying to make sense of the world. To do that, she mostly looks to Janet, her mother, with whom she has a remarkable and idiosyncratic relationship that can only be described as codependent. Zoe Ziegler as the child Lacey is a revelation here. She is this delightfully offbeat preteen through whose perspective we see all of the proceedings. Lacey is right at the age when kids begin to sever closeness with their parents, and yet she's found doing the exact opposite here. She's clinging to old routines like sleeping with her mother, and acting out to keep Janet's attention. That's really the film's guiding metaphor. Besides the fun alliterative rhyme scheme, Janet is the center whose lives all the other characters orbit around. So Janet Planet structurally is broken down into three relationships between two men and one former female friend who come into Janet's life, while Lacey vies to keep her mother's attention. But the way all of this is told is really interesting. See, Annie Baker was a heralded playwright off-Broadway before shifting to directing here. She was known for the power of understatement in her work. I'm talking you could watch some of her characters doing household chores on stage. And that is exactly what we've got here. Just carefully observed details of the movie's central characters. It's a film that is often quiet. We're just witnessing people do stuff in a way that Jean Delmon lovers would be proud of. The film is set in 1991 in Massachusetts, and we just get tons of images and pastiche to recall that time, running through shopping malls, old objects in storefronts. The film is also shot in 16 millimeter to add to this glaze of nostalgia. And despite everything being from Lacey's perspective, Julianne Nicholson turns in this nuanced performance of a woman who seems to have the gravitational pull of a body in space and knows it, by the way, but who is still plagued with self-doubt, racked with both the desire to be good to her daughter and these subtle hints of annoyance that she cannot just grasp her own freedom. Every character in this one is simultaneously warm and just a little off kilter and strange. But I think that's what Baker is actually reaching for, the ineffability or inability to really depict what it's like when a daughter awakens to herself and falls out of love with her imperfect mother. Fortunately for us, the film gives us a few highlight moments of deep talks between the two leads and the ones encircling them. Well, with all of this talk, you may be thinking, damn, this dude loved this one. Eh, not so much. See, we just had a lot of discussion about ideas, coming of age, self-absorption in adults, personal growth, depictions of memory, and that's where Janet Planet soars. But movies are a visual medium. They're about storytelling, and that's where we lose our way some here. The simplest way I know to put it is this. Baker's work gives us the insider's look at all of the tedious details of these two people's lives, but kind of leaves us empty when it comes to finding anything really profound or gripping about either one of them. In other words, yeah, it's kind of dull. Where After Sun shows us these piercing moments of grief for a tortured parent, 
Janet Planet lingers on like a 15 minute performance scene at a thespian commune. I get it. Baker's style is much more straightforward and mannered. Sometimes we get these intricate character details that move us, like Lacey meticulously tending to her doll sets. But so much of the film is just watching almost nothing happening at all. It's a picture that is emotionally flatlined. Baker's style has us as viewers observing at arm's length, rather than really getting inside the characters' worlds and engaging with them. Ultimately, despite moments of hefty dialogue or poignant visual objects, it just largely felt inert to me. So, what do we conclude? In the end, Janet Planet is a film that shines in its portrayal of a mother-daughter relationship and its carefully observed period details, but it struggles to engage beyond that. While it features several tremendous performances and Annie Baker's understated style offers moments of quiet observation, the film ultimately feels emotionally distant and sluggish. It's a well-made piece that might appeal to fans of slow burn character studies, but for me, it lacked the emotional depth and narrative drive to leave a real lasting impact. If you go down to Hammond. Well, there you have it. The only thing left to discuss is our rating for this picture. FOF gives Janet Planet 3.5 out of 5 stars. If you enjoyed this review, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Also, don't forget to visit FermanOnFilm.com for even more movie content. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Stay firm, my friends. Yeah.